Hi guys, um, I'm currently standing in my art studio. Rather dishevelled, I know. This is how I um, just get up and start working in here. Um, no hair brushing, no makeup, so you're gonna have to excuse the mess. But I'm standing in here and I thought I would pull out an old, um, an old artwork, it's not that old, it's 2019. It's the artwork that I did this month last year for Mab Graves Drawerline. Now last year I didn't take part in Inktober but I did do ink drawings all the way through October using the Drawerline prompts and what I tried to do, I tried to take those Halloween-y um, prompts that were part of Drawerline last year um, to, uh, it's all right, my phone's on low battery so uh, I, I took those prompts last year and I tried to combine them in one huge um, ink drawing. So I worked on the one piece for the whole month. It was really tight ink work. Um, it, it took a lot to get it completed in a month with all the other things that I've got going on. Um, and it just struck me this year how far I've come mentally and on this healing process gosh i really do look a mess sorry guys um it, it just struck me how far i've come in a year to sit down with a similar prompts and the same challenge um and, and to start working again it, it's just struck me that a year can make a lot of difference when it comes to mental health this time last year uh, the prompts and the Halloweeny type monster energy, it just made me think about um, how the, the monsters in our own life, they're, they're real. Uh, they're not the spooks and the shadows and the ghosts, like real people uh, uh, are the, the real Halloween stars. Um, and I was in the process last year of, of trying to decide for my own mental health whether I should pull the plug finally and go no contact with people and we're not talking like just friends we're talking like immediate family and it, it's a hard decision it's not a decision that you ever make lightly you know if somebody's decided to go no contact with family you can bet that you have been pushed and pushed and pushed to that decision because it's heartbreaking. My dog's about to bark at me because she's wondering who I'm talking to. What's the matter? Um, yeah, so I was in that place. I was already no contact with my sister, but there was abuse still coming in and I, I it was just a final decision to make, which was incredibly difficult. And it really did, um, it really did affect me. And over the space of the year, the last year I've spent trying to come to terms with that decision and the heartbreak of that decision. And last year's drawerline, this big ink drawing I'm about to show you, was a way for me to, to ponder the stories of the people that I'd gone no contact with and what had led me there. Um, this year, the the Inktober and the drawing pieces, although they're similar prompts, it's all about the the joy that's found when you're through that journey. And it just struck me how much, how far I've come and how that's showing in my artwork. So I just, I got the drawing out to look at it and to think, wow. So I thought I'd just show you guys. So I'm going to turn the camera around. It's a bit shaky, I know, because I'm holding my phone. But I'm going to turn the camera around and show you last piece, piece, last year's piece and show you the prompts in it and um, I just, just share it really. And just to say, if you're going through a similar journey of family scapegoating, decisions to go no contact, that I see you, I see you, I know the heartache in there. I know the misunderstanding that there can be from other people around decisions for no contact. I know the pain of gaslighting and smear campaigns. I know what that feels like and I see you. And if I can come this far in a year, then, you know, anybody can get through this. So anyway, I'm going to show you last year's artwork now. 
Okay, so this is the artwork I did last year, and I do hope my microphone is um, is working okay because um, I'm having a bit of trouble with my iPhone microphones at the moment. So I hope it's not too muffled, uh, and you can see like it's a it's quite a, a large piece. Um, you know, I mean, if, if I, I've printed out the prompts that I use, so if you can see it in comparison to an A4 piece. Um, so this was, this is basically the story of my journey through the dark woods, um, a, a journey of healing. There are characters in here that respond to, um, that respond to the characters in my real life. Um, it wasn't an attempt to throw shade at anybody. It was an attempt to try and understand what I'd walked my pers my perspective on it. And I do understand that in in life, other people will hold different perspectives. I mean, in some stories, I am going to be the villain of the story, and um, I get that. Um, but that doesn't detract from my truth. And some of those stories uh, where I'm the villain, where family scapegoating and narcissistic abuse is involved, they're simply lies. They're, they're lies concocted by other people. So um, this is my perspective. This is my truth. The first prompt, now this is why I printed out the list, because I can't remember from last year, was Vampire. Now this central figure here, um, she's seen in, in two aspects. She's facing forwards and facing backwards, because this is what I did in the piece. I looked forward to where I was going, but I looked back at where what I'd had to do as well. Um, and she is, um, she is the prompt which was on day five. Day five, there was the prompt um, Huntress, or hunter and I wanted her to be the the central figure that's why she's kind of got armor on um, she she is um, she's got mandalas on now the, the mandalas she's wearing as part of her armor are because I I recovered uh, through improving my emotional literacy and I did that through drawing um, mandalas so it was important that her armor contains some of that but she also has a ta tattoos on her arm she has the first prompt which is vampire and rather than drawing a vampire I did a vampire slayer tattoo on her arm because that's what she was doing she was slaying the monsters in her own head and in her her reality um, she's also got the another tattoo which was for the prompt bat as well so she's the, the huntress the hunter hunting down her own truth the backwards facing version of her is breaking circles and this is what i feel my role is i think my role is to um is to break circles generational curses the circles of abuse that pass down through our very dna it stops with me. It stops with me. My children are too precious for me not to do the work. And it's a life's work because it isn't easy. And she's got all the threads here. And she is breaking and tearing that circle. The lace here and the lace on her mask. She's got a mask on because to come out of codependency and people pleasing and to stand up for yourself is like a mask dropping so it was really important that she had a mask and the lace as well it was important that lace was on her as well because that's how I felt I felt so vulnerable and so tender um like a piece of lace and I felt like people had broken holes in me but after a while I realized that Lace is so beautiful. The beauty is in it because of the holes. Without the holes, lace isn't lace. It isn't beautiful. And um, I decided that uh, that she needed to have lace on her. Becoming lace and being broken comes with its own beauty. You can mine that for gold. So her armour was very important. Um, so we've got um, the vampire, the bat the huntress at prompt four was a candelabra so she holds 
she holds a candelabra made out of an octopus and the octopus tentacles holds all the lanterns. The lanterns of the hermit where you go inside and you recover. But anybody that's watched my channel for a while will know how important octopus energy is for me. The octopus is my trauma warrior animal. It's the, with an octopus, you can, you, you can cut its tentacles off and it grows them back. It can regenerate. It can get through a space as small as a, as a coin. It can escape, it can untangle, it can unravel, it can regenerate. It also has three hearts and I just felt like my heart got broken so many times in this journey that I needed three. I needed spare hearts because they were getting shattered. So the octopus for me, it's um, it, it, it's just so important and um, it's got the circles on the tentacles as well. And that's my lantern. That's my way forward, my animal energy. Oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start with this corner of the picture. There are a number of, of prompts here, but this is where the journey starts. The Huntress, you can see on her arm, she's got other tattoos. She's got the Triple Goddess and a Labyrinth. It's because of strengths to do this journey. She embraced um, magic and goddesses and goddess power and animal power and... Um, the strength in Wicca, um, the strength of nature. And she took that strength and she trapped the poison back. We see here a poison plant, that was another prompt. She trapped that poison back and it brought her to a scene that looked like home, that was disguised as home. And in the centre is my depiction of a yokai. Now this is this figure here. Now this is a specific yokai. There are lots of different types of these uh, creatures and I researched them and this is one called a nurikabe and the story behind the nurikabe is it traps its victims by setting up invisible walls and you wander in unsuspectingly and try to escape but in every direction there's an invisible wall and you become trapped. And for me, this, this really resonated because a lot of narcissistic abuse is invisible and you get confused and you can't work out what on earth is going on. And I looked at my story as a huntress and I thought, my gosh, my inner child, the child that I was all those years ago that got raised in this charade of home is still there. She's completely trapped. And I started here because I wanted to go back and save her. I wanted to go and get my inner child that had been left abandoned. Um, you have to start with the core wounds. On, on You have to find out where it started to begin with. Otherwise, you've got no chance of healing. Um, so I ran back and I grabbed, my, I grabbed my inner child. And I told her I'd never abandon her again. I told her to trust me that I'd got her. This yakai is a central figure. This is based on my mother. Um, she's knitting a Frankenstein, which was another prompt. Um, and she's got all, all her wool. She's the monster creator. Um, she is the one with the charade of home, but triangulating and separating and pitting people against each other till there's dysfunction in every direction. And that's what happened. Um, it's funny that Frankenstein, the story of Frankenstein, is a man-made cre creation of a monster. And for me, it just summed everything up. All the shelves behind are um, have jars like mistrust, lies, betrayal, um, what else, Con control. Uh, we've got a whole laboratory of spells, which... At first glance, it just looks like a, a normal bookcase, but if you zoom in closely, you can see the potions. Trick or treat was another prompt. The labor this was the prompt for laboratory, and trick or treat was in there. Um, so it looks like home, but it isn't really. And the click of the needles can hypnotise you into falling back into old roles. When I ran back and grabbed my inner child, I made sure I didn't get hypnotised by the click of needles. 
There was another prompt here, the prompt toad. <laughs> the toad is her pet. The toad is gloating because the toad knows that you gave away your power. You were tricked into believing that if you kissed the toad, it would turn into a prince. But there are no princes in your story because you were wading in the murky waters of this character. You were programmed to kiss on repeat frogs because that's what you thought love was. There are no princes here. There are no saviours in disguise. You were programmed to wade with frogs until you broke the circle. Down here are two other characters. This um, creature here is a, a character called a chimera. And a chimera is a monster that's made up of different parts of animals. It's normally a snake's tail and a goat's head and a lion um but this is um this is drawn as the pet dog the rock um <laughs> and in real life when i researched what a chimera was in real life chimeras can actually occur in real life when a twin absorbs the cells of another twin and that's a chimera in real life now I'm a twin and one of the tragic stories, parts of my story is that my twin brother, who my mother calls The Rock, um, he was fed so much poison that um, we are now no contact. And it's a no contact of tragic triangulation. Uh, there's a leash here, it's very much controlled. He's very much controlled and um, and I had to realise that this was a symbiotic relationship and I had to walk away from both. I couldn't deal with the abuse of it anymore, uh, the believing of lies of me. And this creature down here is a tatsal worm. And that tatsal worm is an evil little creature. It's a creature that looks like a cat that kills with just one glance. It serves as up poison undiluted. And that's a gift because if poison is undiluted you can sniff it out a lot quicker than if it's hidden uh, and that is my other sibling it is a um that <laughs> was a serving up of poison there that was undiluted and it was so easy to spot and it's what put me on the right track and here this isn't a prompt there's a green teacup here my dad my beautiful gentle dad always had his own green teacup and saucer and he would sit stirring his tea every day. I lost my dad 13 years ago and the spirit of my dad has come to me time and time again and he's woven here into the lace that I became, being my strength. I didn't leave the spirit of my dad in this circle. I broke the circle and the spirit of my dad drifted out and came with it. There are loads of prompts in this corner. This corner is very heartfelt. This is the core wound. These are the key people that I had to break contact with. This is my heartbreak laid out. And my dad coming with me for strength. So no contact is in place and I'm moving forward trying to heal. And it takes me up to this dark wood and this dark, dark pool. Now this pool is the dating pool for me. This is where I first went before I healed. Let's date again. Let's throw myself back into it all. You can't do this guys before you've healed because the dating pool can be very a very very dark place if you do. And in this dating pool I put some different prompts. You can see the kelpie hidden under the water here. You can see the creature from the Black Lagoon and you can see um, La Llorona, I think I've pronounced that right. Um, the Kelpie, he is lusting after the bare flesh of the mermaids, which you can see under the water and on the rocks. And the story of the Kelpie is that it's a horse-like type creature that lives in water that can seduce people to climb onto its back but as soon as you have climbed onto its back you can't get away from it you're stuck and then he swims under the water to drag you to the depths to drown you and 
when I read that prompt, I thought about um, a person that I dated in the six years of healing. There was only one person that I began to open my heart up to properly. And he did that. I hadn't realised then about repetition compulsion. If you're not healed, you will automatically and subconsciously, without knowing it, seek out similar patterns, similar treatment. And this is what I did. I wasn't healed. I found an exact match. And now my dog's now barking at me. <laughs> I found similar. I repeated. And I had to learn the hard way and it broke me all over again. And I realised then that if you go to the dating pool unhealed, you'll get this creature from the Black Lagoon that crawls out and drags you away from where you need to be. And the prompt of um, La Llorona, I think I'm saying that right. Um, uh, now, this is, this is the old um, a, a myth about a... A woman betrayed by her true love, her true love treat cheated on her, and in her angst, she threw her their children into the river to drown, and then she spent and then she spent the rest of eternity wailing in the waters, searching for the souls of her children. It's a tragic, tragic tale. And it reminds me that um, women betrayed are like wild souls lost and I was there myself for a long time. I was a wild soul lost. But I read about this tale in Clarissa Pinkola Este's book, The Women Who Run With The Wolves. And she, she I'm going to quote her, she um, talked about what you're willing to offer up in sacrifice when you become one of these wild women betrayed. And she, said that it's about finding our strengths and that soft dreams under hard conditions are no good. In tough times, we must have tough dreams. And for me, I thought I thought about the wins I'd got in this because I had strong dreams. There was nothing up for um, sacrifice at the water's edge, especially not my children. I wasn't going to become stuck as a wild woman, a wild heart lost. My children were never up for sacrifice at the water's edge. I was strong enough to take them with me. I've drawn three child spirits here for my three children. This was a celebration of my wins. Yes, I'd been betrayed by true love more than once. I'd been betrayed by family love as well. But nothing in my healing was up for sacrifice at the water's edge. And then you come to the path and where's she going next? So now we come to the dark woods. This is the prompt the haunted forest. Um, I've always said with healing, there's no way around it. You have to go straight through the middle of it. You can't speed the journey up. You can't bypass the journey. The only way out is through when it comes to healing. And this is so true. So the prompt for the haunted forest, I wanted to de depict that dark forest that you have to go through. But the path is in silver. The path is also underlined by the catacombs. Here we see the uh, prompts for catacombs. Black dog is in here. Creepy candy is in here. Um, what else? Oh, Stranger Things was another prompt that was in here. And we see like this kind of space element with octopus tentacles. That's really um, strange within it. Um, now the catacombs underlie any journey of healing. There is a period of grieving. For me, there was depression. There was post-traumatic stress disorder, lack of trust dissociation. There were many, many mental health issues that came with this journey of healing. But ultimately, the catacombs are a safe place. They're a needed place. Well, they were for me anyway. They were a place to rest, to recover before the work needed to be done. Um, the black dog represents the depression. Uh, and the, the uh, creepy candy represents the jars of sweeties. It's like some sort of sick, sweetie shop. Um, for me, growing up, 
the um, eating disorder that I now struggle with uh, was very much implanted on purpose um, to keep me, and I quote, <laughs> this was actually said to my face, to keep me um, at home with nobody interested in me. So I'm not just passing responsibility for an eating disorder to somebody else. It's now my fully my responsibility, but um, there was an implanting, and that's what the creepy candy stands for. There's a figure there covered, surrounded by the candy all over the floor, just in despair, in the catacombs resting. But the octopus tentacles in the Stranger Things are willing, are ready and waiting to lift her up when she's ready, up through the gap, back onto the path of healing. She's first met by <laughs> the pumpkin guy. That was another prompt. There he is, peeping out from behind the tree. <laughs> and he's there with the, the number 23, which was is my birthday. It was also the number of my allotment because the first thing that I rediscovered when I stepped onto my path of healing was my love of, of gardening. I started building my garden again. I got an allotment space, plot 23. I stepped back into muddy wellies and growing flowers and it was the first thing that I reclaimed after years of being destroyed and losing myself. So the pumpkin guy is there to greet me with my garden. The path is also um, full of the will of the wisp. Now I, I depicted this prompt with paper cutting. Paper cutting was a new skill for me and you will see over here I paper cut this lace because when I first started to heal I felt so destroyed. I just, I felt like I was defined by everything that I had lost, everything that wasn't me anymore. I, I felt that um, I wasn't defined anymore by who I was or what I was. I loved. I felt like I was defined by what I'd lost, what I'd given up and how broken I was. And when I realised the beauty in lace and the fact that, you know, there's that quote, the cracks are where the light gets in, I began to embrace that void that I felt defined me because, and I wanted to start drawing with voids and that led me into paper cutting. And I began to appreciate that when you lose things or when you're broken or when you, you need healing from something, the the void that's created and the things that you lost can actually be the place where the light gets in. Uh, and that's why I, I really started to embrace this idea of paper cutting. So I wanted the will of the wisp along the path to be all about that void. Um, and that's why I depicted it in paper cutting. The creepy forest, if you see, um, what it was, it was the haunted forest was the prompt. It has figures, it has ghosts in amongst the trees. These ghosts are our memories and they whisper to you about letting go or holding on. They can be seductive, the memories. They can keep you stuck. So they're there to teach you lessons. Heed what they're saying, but don't get distracted from the path. Remember... The only way out is through. As we enter the darkest part of the woods, the trees have symbols on. Now, these are um, the Celtic symbols of the werewolf. And in Celtic mythology, the werewolf isn't a monster at all. The werewolf is a creature that comes to protect children and lost people. Uh, and when I realised that that was what a werewolf means in Irish mythology, that, that's what I wanted to use for the werewolf prompt. And I put the werewolf scratches and the symbol on three trees, one for each of my children. My children would not become lost on this journey. Um, what else have we got here? Above the haunted forest, we have my drawing for the UFO. I'm entering alien territory here. This is why the UFO is lighting up this part of the woods. For some people, self-love and self-ownership, it's alien territory. You know, being healed and boundaried and owning your own truth, it's not what we're used to, some of us who have been reared in narcissistically abusive environments. 
I wanted to light up this final destination of my healing journey with the lights of the UFO to 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 say um to say to acknowledge that it's alien territory uh, my journey began with the light of the moon and a coven of witches this is for the prompts moon which is in coven dancing in my head saying come on you've got magic now you've got goddess power you've got the moon you're connected now you can do it and that does eventually lead me into the alien territory of my final destination as I reach the exit out of the woods, which is this magical doorway, I first meet this character. Now, this was for the prompt of Huli Jing, and I, I hope I've got that right. Uh, the Huli Jing is the many-tailed fox spirit that is renowned for the clear sight and magical knowing of things a thousand miles distant. And this is where you get clear sight. You can see where you've been. You can see the patterns. This is all about healing, this, this spirit and this prompt for me. And when I researched her, I couldn't believe it. In human form, the Huli Jing can take human form and it always takes the form of a 50-year-old woman. And when I drew this piece, it was the year I turned 50, I... The synchronicity of that, guys, I couldn't believe it. So the Huli Jing stands at my doorway out into healing and in the doorway stands the cryptid. Now the cryptid is any creature that may or may not exist. And for me, it just seemed a fantastical representation <laughs> of being healed and boundaried um, and being whole. Um, do, does that version of me exist? I'd never met her before. Does she exist or not? She was my cryptid, my final fantastical healing destination. So you can see um, that's my whole journey as the Huntress, um, claiming back who I am, my own truth, my journey through, my journey through complete and utter devastation and betrayal and heartache and the disbelief that patterns can repeat, but then slowly beginning to own my own power to realise that actually I wasn't prepared to sacrifice at the water's edge. I would use um, all the magical energy available to me to enter the haunted forest to sit in the catacombs where, where required and begin to claim things back. That's my journey from the 2019 Drawerline. Um, it, it, it's, it, it, I look back on it and I just think, oh wow, how did you survive? How did you get there? And for me, art helped me to get to where I am today. Um, I hope you enjoyed me sharing the journey of this piece and the story behind it. Um, it's dedicated to everybody going through the haunted forest. I see you guys, I see you. There are doorways out, keep going, even if you can only do a minute at a time. I see you, I've walked the path before you. Keep going. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.